Okay. Um, so, I am the kind of person who, and we've talked about this before, suffers from uh, analysis paralysis sometimes, or okay. in, another, in another way, maybe like perfectionism. Um, mm-hmm. And I've told this to Austin several times, and it's that I remember when I first picked up a camera in 2012, seeing all the other like more experienced photographers and videographers have like thousands of dollars worth of gear and here's my like not so expensive like piece of equipment that took basic photos i told myself that like you know what i i don't want to try making like concepts or productions or art projects until i got like a professional grade camera as them Mm -hmm. and years went by and i never got that uh i never got that pro grade camera and as those years went by I never made anything because I told myself I want the best of the best of the best but I'd never gotten those things and because of that there were so many like moments in time where I just wasn't creating and I wasn't getting better and so the concept of this podcast is like almost hand in hand Um, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about it like you know there's the person who wants to get into tennis so you know what he does he buys the most expensive tennis Nike shoes the most expensive like racket and like um what is that it's a hat but it's not a hat and exposes your head okay like yeah yeah I know exa- yeah like the vi- not but the visor is but... it a visor i don't know you know what i'm talking about it's like a hat yeah i know top. exactly but, yeah but basically what he was saying was that like here's the person who like invests a bunch of money into playing tennis does it a few times and goes eh, i'm not so good at it so i'm out of here and here's the person that doesn't have a lot of money and just uses whatever he gets and he gets really good at it and so what i'm trying to do is like get rid of that moments in time where I did nothing and not worry about like the perfectionism and just do. And that's the concept that I was kind of telling Austin and like a handful of my friends as to why I wanted to go back and do this podcast thing again, because when I did it a handful of times in the past, it was so much fun. Um, and I would hit myself with that analysis, paralysis, perfectionism. And then I, I would go and see other people create whatever it is they wanted to create, whatever content they wanted to do. And they nailed it. And when I mean by nail it, like, they didn't have the most expensive equipment they didn't have this or that but the fact that they did it and they got a lot of attention they got a lot of views and i want to preface it by saying i'm not necessarily here for the views or the likes or the follows i'm here to create something and it is cool when people receive the things that i create and they're like they give that feedback and like you know that i enjoyed it it helped me in one way or another and i like the content that you make and that's kind of in the direction i want to go if there's any way that i can like help someone along their journey or just to create something and someone needed to hear something that we went through and they were like you know what if they did that i can do it too etc i know i just talked mm-hmm. a lot but so that's basically <laughs> the gist of this podcast and today i have a very special guest my good friend austin austin welcome to the show thank you thank you and if it's any testament to how little we've prepared for this podcast uh brian specifically asked me to not prepare any material for this podcast we would just we chose a date and a time. We chose a time this morning, actually. We chose the date about a week ago. And he said, we'll just turn on, we'll just hit the record button, and we'll go from there. And it was uh, to the point where I thought I would actually be interviewing him rather than the other way around. So it's kind of <laughs> cool to see that Brian's actually bringing back the podcast that he started before, because I was a big fan of those. But because because I thought I was, interview- I, I was interviewing Brian, and because I've been listening to a lot of podcasts myself, I noticed that podcasts like this tend to introduce the people that are on there first just to make sure that any new listeners will know what each person is up to so i came up with a little bit of an intro for brian if i were to bring him on as a guest so for those of you for the first time listeners so you you guys know who's on here uh, we have brian cali long here who is a who also goes by brian eats on youtube or for some people dj biza but that's kind of like a more niche audience who (laughs) knows of that yeah so he he at 21 years old has almost or has over a decade's worth of professional freelance and freelancing photography and videography experience and social media management so pretty young in the game but very experienced out in the field and now he wants to get and the reason why he's on youtube is because he's he saw like well i mean he was doing his foodie stuff uh he was rage baiting people by throwing away valuable and viral (laughs) items in the trash (laughs) And um, yep. since since then, he's deleted all social media except for his YouTube channel, where he's now mm-hmm. doing Project Zomboid, or la- was last doing Project Zomboid, and I'm assuming now is going back into the podcasting stuff, yeah. with the, starting with this, right? 
Yes. Abs- First off, that was an incredible <laughs> intro. I was not expecting that. And I- shout out to the 21 year old dude. Like- <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I love um, it. I mean, I've only known Brian for a couple years now, yeah. and um, the first time I ever saw him post about his birthday, he said, I'm turning 21 years old, and he's a young-looking guy, and I believed it, and, like, oh, like, yeah. and I was like, dude, there's, like, dude you're, you're only 21, that's crazy, you're doing like all this crazy stuff, and he's like, I'm actually older than you, bro, I'm your Kuya type, type, <laughs> type deal, <laughs> but I mean... I- <laughs> let, me, let me just say this, I, I enjoy harmless trolling just as much as the next guy so i'll i'll i'm like i i turned 21 plus i can't even math right now plus 12 in about four five days three days but i i've always liked like just like little troll things like that and and in my opinion they were fairly harmless except for when i threw those uh pokemon games in the trash that was like one of the biggest videos i had and i was getting mad death threats i will never forget (laughs) that um, yeah, long story short, a few years ago, Pokemon Scarlet Violet came out, and I had this running gag where I would just take something that just released, and I would throw it in the trash, and I would upload it, and people, would, I was getting so many hits on that video, it was like hitting 17k on, on TikTok, and it was climbing into the 20s, and then I uploaded it to Instagram, and like overnight, I, I remember in like a few days, it was, it hit like 250k before I deleted that Instagram, and the death threats were not the reason why, and we'll talk about that later. But I, I, yeah, I just thought that was funny. All the things that you said I did, I only did, I legitimately <laughs> did them because I thought they were funny. And I think that's a good reason to upload something. And whether you knew it or not, I mean, I'm sure you understood it to an extent, given like your background in social media manage or ex- with social media management and whatnot. That uh, rage baiting stuff like that is kind of one of the metas for getting engagement on social media platforms. Whether or not that's why you, I mean, you did it for fun, but yeah. I mean, that's that's why. Oh, there's so much like so much of that energy on the internet right now because people choose to engage with that like when someone throws away the new iphone it's like dude what are you doing you have they're so mad that they have to say something and then that just sends their reels or shorts tiktoks out to everyone else and then it's a yeah. it's a cycle but that's not really the i don't think i want to focus too much on that one because that's more no of like a tactical thing rather than the original point which was to get over the analysis paralysis of putting out content and just getting started, whether it's content creation or just any yeah. like passion project that you want to do, and uh, yeah, that's why we're here yeah, today. That's absolutely that's absolutely uh, a great topic and something that I talk about to people all the time. Um, for a quick sake of example, there was a there's a gentleman I've been working with the last week who's uh, who's a new like real estate agent, I, I believe, and he mm-hmm. called me and he was like, "Hey, I'd like to hire you for some reels," and whenever i have these consultation talks with people i always try to feel them out to see if i should go in guns blazing and see if i'm even the right fit for what they need like what's the point of Mm. them hiring me if they don't even need me or etc so whenever i go into calls with these people i like the the first three things or the biggest three things that i always tell them or two things i can't count is number Mm -hmm. one um and this is what i'd like to tell you guys too is that social media people approach it thinking that they need to get a bunch of followers um, and that'll reflect their self-worth. That'll help their their sales, their ego, their influencing, whatever. Um, And they just just believe that they need more followers. How do I get more followers? And the thing that I learned through observations and through my own experience is that it's called social media and people forget that. You have Hmm. to be social on social media to grow. Uh, I remember and this isn't in the sense of Instagram, but when we were all jumping onto to Twitch in deep quarantine, a mm-hmm. lot of my friends were hitting what before partner is it? It's affiliate, right? I affiliate, yes, in a while. affiliate. And it's just like what, like how many followers? Three consistent viewers for a long time, or stream consistently for three days. And mm-hmm. I would get people like three or four people, and for some reason, I was never hitting affiliate. And I was like, why am I? Not? All my friends hit it way before me. And then, you know, you know what I told myself was, you know what, I think I have to, instead of hoping that people come to me, I should go out to them and be their friends first, be a genuine friend first. Mm. So I would visit so many other people's streams and I would consistently, uh, I wouldn't say almost every day, but maybe because we were in quarantine, but Mm -hmm. very consistently every day, if not every other day, I'd come in, leave genuine comments, 
watch genuinely watch their stream and have like a bunch of like at the time like new friends and new streamers like like their pages opened in different windows and because i was showing them love they would show me love and when i would stream that's when the people finally came and watched my stream so going back to it people forget and i feel like they low-key get lost in the sauce thinking that oh everyone's just gonna come to me because i'm cool and i'm dope and yes that might be true but they don't know you exist because you're not interacting with them. So that's that's mm-hmm. the first tip I always tell people when they want to go to the social media is one, you have to be social on social media. Mm-hmm. Two, um, the analogy that I like to use is that like this is probably your most powerful tool. And mm. before we get into microphones and editing and sound effects and cameras, Use what you already have. And the gentleman that I was talking to on the phone, I told them that, like, and I tell this to you, I tell this to everyone, there are people on TikTok who are 15 years old, 16 years old, 17 years old. They take their phone, and all they do is this, and they get millions of views, and they get paid in mansions. And I'm like, what is going on? And, you know, like, I was telling you, like, 10 years ago, I was so stuck on, I need, like the most expensive camera and i think this camera itself was 2500 oh my gosh or at least two thousand dollars for sure this lens i got used for 600 this other lens i got used for another 700 and look how much i've used them they're so worn out and some kid who's 15 outclasses me with this and i think about that all the time and a lot of a lot of what i like the conversations i have with myself is kind of reverse engineering the scripts instead of me waiting to get expensive equipment use what you have. You don't necessarily need me to be your videographer per se, which is what I was telling this guy, as long Mm -hmm. as you're following those things. Be social, create content. And I think the third thing is that I educate them is that like, you just have to start. And that's probably Mm -hmm. the hardest thing out of these three tips is that we get stuck and I'm guilty of that. We get stuck in overthinking and what if people don't like me? What if my content is bad? But I, I, when you first start, your stuff is never gonna be amazingly great. And when I meet other content creators that make a good name for themselves and they're putting up content and they're getting massive amounts of views and followers and stuff, I love seeing that because it gets me to think about those three principles. It's like, just start. You don't need the most expensive equipment. And um, what was it? What was I just saying? Let's start. Let's start. And Whatever. be social. Like, and, uh, and yeah, being social. Yeah. And yep. I, I think that's that's the three biggest tips that... I learned subconsciously over the span of at least 10 years that I, and I learned this the wrong way. Like I learned this through mistakes. Um, and that's the thing that I want people to understand. And that's the thing that these are the things that I try to educate people on when it comes to like paid opportunities. And that was the thing that really impressed me with your content, Austin, is when I came back from vacation, you were, you already hit it. And I remember the conversation we had before I went on vacation is that you wanted to hit, uh, you wanted to, take on youtube so much and you were like hey brian i did it i was ex- i was expecting all of 2024 to hit mm-hmm. that benchmark and i did it in the span of a handful of months when i came back in like december january so yes. uh, there is no format or rules to this so we can ask each other questions okay. i don't care so yeah. you've got to tell so, me how you approached starting youtube and i know you at the time you said you had like 500 ish followers and when it came back from a trip you exploded and what was like going on through your head before you started hitting those numbers and what was going on in your head after you're like whoa i that just happened okay so before i get into that i want to like go over the three points that you went over because having that having that in the background or in your arsenal will help understand like my own journey from where i started and where i'm at today so i mean i guess for starters like i'm i go by chef austin on youtube and other socials uh, I'm formerly a full-time sushi chef and now full-time YouTuber, content creator now, and hit YouTube partner in a month after I started trying it, and then just uh, yeah, full sending full-time full-time content creation life as of two that. days ago again, because I I tried it before and then kind of picked up a day job to figure out my next strategy and now I got it. So that's why we're here today. But to go over the three points that Brian was talking about, the whole point about being social and getting involved in a community of people that are interested in your passions and whatnot. I think that's a that's a good thing to do because oftentimes in your current environment, you might not find the, the people that are in, as interested in the things oh, that you're passionate yeah. about as you are. Oh, yeah. And when you aren't surrounded by the people who are willing to full send your passions with you, it can kind of be a bit draining or it's hard to keep yourself motivated to, to do that. 
But with the internet, there's so many people out there. And even if like 1% of the internet or 1% of the world was into, was into the same thing as you were, or let's say even 1% of 1%, that's still at least like 100,000 people. And you will, find, you will find those people. And all you got to do is interact with them, say hey. And yeah, you can, you can build your circle from there. Brian did it to, to build his circle big enough to reach Twitch affiliate, which is a big milestone for a lot of people, actually. And uh, it's also backed, it's backed not just by Brian's experiences, but my own experiences with Lethal Company. That's the main game that I stream. I've actually started yeah. getting more involved with the speedrunning community in recent times and it's wow. been a, it's been a real fun time and i even started my own discord now and it's been real cool started about a week ago got o over 150 people in there now and we're just chilling vibing wow. and um and to go up a step even higher it's cool that you mentioned gary vaynerchuk as well because that's a strategy that i basically borrowed from him it's yeah. called his i think it's called his two dollar or dollar 98 or dollar 96 strategy where you go to as many different social media posts as you can in your niche and you give your two cents and you give two cents up until you've wow. added up to like two dollars or whatever the amount was and uh yeah i so haven't it, even it's, heard of that that's incredible i want to try yeah, that now wow. yeah so if, so if you give your two cents for 100 posts that that's uh, two dollars basically obviously gary vaynerchuk has a pretty hardcore strategy but yeah. that goes into the the whole getting started point which is super important like you like you said you don't need the best equipment all you need to do is yeah be on social media and i think that's the one thing that is a prerequisite to being social on social media you have to be present on social media oh, to yeah. begin with uh both uploading your own content and engaging with other people's stuff yeah. so just just get on there and i think a good example of that even an even better example than my content is uh this youtuber that goes by the uneducated economist so yeah i like i like his not not only because of the way he records and uploads his videos and even frames his videos but also because he's in an older demographic too. Because a lot of times when we talk about getting started mm -hmm. in social media, we talk about like the high schoolers, etc., the, the younger people who are getting into it. And yeah. for people like us who are, we're, I mean, we're not old by any means, but we are yeah. at least two times older than that. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, than most kids. And I, I feel like when, when points like that are brought up to people in our generation, they say, oh, well, we didn't have those same opportunities back then. Therefore, like they have more of an advantage than we do. And we're older, so it's kind of too late. Can't teach an old dog yeah. new tricks type thing. But that's why I like examples like the Uneducated Economist, where he only recently started doing YouTube, like a couple years ago, I'd say. And he's he's older than we are. He started when he was in his 40s, uh, recovering alcoholic and whatnot. Wow. And he basically just decided to turn his life around and started stu studying macroeconomics on his own time. No like formal education or anything, just going around on YouTube looking stuff up. And he would... He would bug the absolute daylights out of his coworkers, and at, it was to the point where his coworkers were like, "Dude, you need to like start a start a vlog, podcast, whatever," because <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. And that goes back to like the whole finding your tribe thing, because obviously yeah. his coworkers wasn't his tribe. Yeah. So what he did was he's like, "Oh, okay, I'll go start a vlog then." So he sat in his car during his lunch break, just filmed himself on his front facing camera, on his phone, and did, just talked for 30, 40 minutes. And then uploaded that to YouTube raw with just some title he came up with and his thumbnail, just him sitting in his car. Yeah. And he now does YouTube full time, has over 100,000 subscribers, and he hasn't changed that formula since he started. Wow. So, so in an era of retention editing where people are like hyper yeah. editing and trying to keep your attention, trying Sound to get your, yeah, trying to ca face. hook you in the fi first five seconds, first minute, whatever. Yeah. We have this guy who's finding success and literally just sitting in his car on his lunch break using the... Yeah phone front facing phone on your camera which is worse than the ones on the back yeah and, that is so true <laughs> uh, um and then the phone no no like microphone or anything just the built-in one and still get, and also self-learning too starting from yeah. scratch and just kind of sharing as he goes and yeah he's finding success good enough success for himself for me, someone like me who's not even in his niche to find him you know yeah. and that that kind of story is inspiring, and the fact that he's a bit old, bit older than us is cool too. Like yeah. he obviously wasn't too old to get started, and if he wasn't too old to get started, then we aren't either. Then so. we shouldn't have an excuse. Either. Yeah, I, and that's actually one of the that. yeah. Sorry. That's one of the things I like about Gary Vaynerchuk as well. Like he 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 be talking to like fifty year olds who think it's well past their prime or whatever, and he's like, no, you still have so much time to do your stuff. And Absolutely. With like the pace that you can grow on the internet, it's just it's just true. It's just true. Yeah. I think. You can't you can't really start seeing those kinds of results for yourself unless you're putting yourself out there. Fair. So, 
I, that goes back. I love yeah, that. Go for it. Sorry, yeah. I'm so sorry, Austin. Like, <laughs> you're good, you're you know, good. whenever I talk with Austin, especially like in person, like I, I always get afraid that I'm like over, like talking over him and cutting him off. But it's because I, I love the conversation that we that that we have. I love the conversations that we have. That I'm just like, oh man, I want to share what uh, what I've heard, what I've experienced, what I observed that relates to what he's saying. You know, I love the riffs back and forth, and I that's that's. I, I, I 100% agree. That's the same thing for me is that I, I love hearing these stories because it's inspiring and it's like, you know, we should have no excuse. Like like you said, like most of the people on social media, like on Reels and TikToks these days are all younger people and, you know, we're a little bit older than them, but we shouldn't like fall into that mindset or like, you know what, I'm past, I, I'm not that age anymore. I shouldn't even bother because like, you know, mm-hmm. we hear stories almost every other like day of like people who become internet celebrities or people who like can feed their families and retire from their jobs because of something they did through social media. And it's just like, wow, like I, I wouldn't say that's necessarily what everyone's trying to chase mm-hmm. or maybe, maybe that's not necessarily what I'm trying to chase. Oh, who knows? Maybe. But I love hearing stories like that because it's possible, you know, like, mm-hmm. like it's like we already hear the negativity and like all the sad stories throughout our normal day lives. and. You know, a lot of us, like, and, and me included, like, imagine if I just became, like, a full-time Instagram. You know, I got so many sponsorships that I don't have to clock in. Like, you know, I, I think to a certain degree, we all, like, like want to get a piece of that. Um, yeah. And one of my, and just to riff back on what you were saying, like, we, I think we, we have been exposed too much to those hyper 15-second edits. While they are still nice to look at, I feel like there is a shift in how content is being consumed now and it was going back to like we were talking about sam sulik the other night Mm -hmm. and i randomly found him just scroll like i was sick in japan on my holiday and i was literally in bed for like a week and i was like what am i gonna watch to entertain and then sam sulik showed up somehow and i don't even watch fitness stuff but i watched it because it was it was entertaining to watch it was a long form content no crazy hyper edits and i felt relatable like i could relate to what this gentleman was talking about to a certain degree you know i don't know everything about fitness but um mm-hmm. if i may push a little bit more onto uh what we were kind of talking about earlier um yeah. one of my clients there's a brewery who i shoot content for and when i was shooting for them i was using this camera and i was editing it and it took a little bit more time because the footage that comes out of here is like larger files so it takes time whatever and i would upload it or I would send it to them and they'd upload it to their page and they would get, you know, a good chunk of hits. But then I was kind of telling one of my buddies that it's kind of overkill that I'm shooting with this camera and sometimes it can be a little bit threatening to people when someone shoves a camera in your face. And then we were talking about it and we realized, why don't we just shoot with our phones? And when we did that, we noticed that the videos we shot with our phones, which didn't look the same as this the quality was definitely different but we noticed Mm -hmm. that the videos we uploaded to their 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 pages were getting more hits with the phone videos and that struck a huge chord with me because again i don't think you need in these in this day and age i don't necessarily think you need the higher quality camera i mean yes it does help but i feel like when i consume content on places like instagram i i feel like I like the content that's shot on it because it looks like I'm there. It looks familiar to me. When I shoot videos on my phone, the, sh- the stuff that people upload, it looks like I shot that. And I think it comes down to being relatable. And I think it comes mm-hmm. down to like, I still like this creator because it feels like it's a genuine person, not, not this big production value. Like in the early days of YouTube, who was that one girl? There was like, like, like a vlogger on YouTube who people didn't like her as much because she came off as like one of us like it was shot in her bedroom and then it turns out there was a whole production value behind it to make it look like i don't remember her name but i'll I'll post it here but like i i feel like that fakeness people can smell it but on the flip Mm -hmm. side like the relatability stuff is huge because you know for me i like to do business with people who are like me and i'll take that a step further i like people who are like me and i feel like subconsciously in the back of my head when i watch certain pieces of content if it's filmed on the phone i like it better i i i don't know why i just feel like i can relate to them better sorry that was a lot to say <laughs> no you're good you're good and uh something i like about how what what the, the, the <clears throat> something i like about the insight that brian brings to the table is that whenever he talks about this kind of stuff he's not just kind of pulling it out of wherever he has a whole portfolio of experience to draw from 
And um, okay. and some like I feel like nowadays, and I might just be over like generalizing or whatever. People will have opinions that aren't theirs, and just saying mm -hmm. like, "Oh, this this doesn't work because I've seen someone else do it this way." Mm -hmm. Blah blah blah. But I think, and while there is, I think you should put some stock into what the experts or so and so the people in the field are doing. I think the best results that you can draw from are results that come from your own data yeah, and from your own experience. So. So like that that's why getting that's actually the big reason why getting started is important. It isn't so that you can succeed off like right away. It's just yeah. so that you can create a lot of data points to draw from and improve from. So like whenever someone comes to me and asks like how do I do YouTube better or how do I do streaming better kind of thing it's like well if you haven't done it then you got to start doing it so that way we can see right. what so we can see what the issues are over a long period of time and then we can kind of improve from there. And I mean that's coming from someone who decided that when I started my YouTube journey with Lethal Company to do daily uploads for six months straight, because I figured I might, well, if I'm going to, I mean, I, I did, I did do my research on some other YouTubers who came up and like what they were doing and whatnot. And I noticed that they were going for a one, one video a week schedule. And I noticed that their numbers would go up when they uploaded and then down when they weren't uploading. And I thought, well, what's stopping me from doing it every day at the start? And just getting as many reps in as possible and as much data as possible and um i mean it ended up working wow. out so ended up working out obviously like because you don't the, every time i uploaded it was a new opportunity to like find a successful video kind of thing and uh yeah, yeah at some point i started noticing which types of videos resonated with the audience better or worked better on youtube so i started kind of leaning more into those while still throwing in some extra experimental ones because i obviously hadn't explored the full spectrum of youtube content creation or what people would like and uh yeah i got so much valuable data from that and i'm confident that i can do it again in like a different in like different That's areas good. and whatnot just and um yeah just kind of t i did take a break though i did take a one month break because yeah. i wanted because i started studying different strategies my main strategy on youtube was to or to earning from youtube was through ad revenue but yeah. i've learned that there's better ways to actually do that but i mean that's a bit more that's a bit that's something you don't have to think about when getting started like the money at all i think it's just more important to actually go out there and figure out what you like and that's another reason why do getting your reps in is good because when you start off you might it's the idea might sound good like you might want to make food videos like daily or whatever but then when you actually do it it's like dang making videos for this isn't as fun as just you know making the food and eating yeah. it and being proud of the result i'll just take a photo instead you know yeah there's a um, lot of production that goes on behind that people don't yeah. see or know. And that's, like, that's coming as personal experience, too. Because, like, I mean, I've talked with you a long time about doing about doing food content and have even brought you on to the dinners to, like, film stuff. Yeah. And I ha I still have that whole library of footage, like, on my on my SD card, or not a hard drive, external hard drive. And um, it's there. I, I just got to I just got to edit it. <laughs> I just got to I still but, have uh, the part two before I left for Japan. I still have all that raw footage. So I'll give that to yeah, you the next time I see you. But for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to it sooner, now, especially now that I can do this full time. Whatever. I mean, I have, obviously, I don't think I didn't I don't think that you need to go full time to get started. Like just extra background that I haven't touched on yet is when I started doing the doing the YouTube stuff. I was still working a full time job doing sushi. And that that was when my production was the best actually so i would still i would still work like 40 50 hours a week doing sushi and then go home and work 40 to 50 hours doing uh yeah. video editing and recording so it was like it was basically 80 to 100 hour work week just trying to make it happen for at least and it took me one month to get to partner and then another month to leave the day job and then oh so that that was just kind of 80 to 100 hours for for two months which i think is a lot faster of a time horizon than most people will experience um but it just, I just happened to, I just happened to find a pretty good opportunity to make use of that and, uh, and it stayed on it. Because I guess I mean I've said it before. I don't know if I've said it officially on camera or not, but um, I'm not doing the gaming thing so much because I'm passionate about gaming. I can't really say that <laughs> that gaming is my ultimate passion. That's kind of why we're here today, on yeah. the podcast, talking more about like the back end of stuff. Because what I'm passionate about is just kind of showing, or making working model is a proof of concept that uh you can pursue different like passions creative stuff hobbies and actually like earn an income from it so the, the ideal what the ideal experience for me or from a, a viewer of my channel is to see me and be like oh this is just a normal ass dude who's making a living playing video games 
and it's not like he's doing anything crazy like he's not he doesn't have crazy banners or profile yeah. pictures or editing it's literally just jump cuts he uses davinci resolve which is free he uses canva yeah. it's not not even paying for any like software he paid he paid for a ten dollar video game and he's making like tens and thousands of dollars and it's like what how can i start doing that? i'm even better at the game than he is and i'm funnier so like why am i so it's like why, why am i not doing the same thing so that's kind of what I, what i what i want people to see and it's actually the reason why i started i i started giving the gaming thing a more serious go and that goes back to quarantine and twitch and our circle of friends who hit affiliate right yeah because I don't know if we i mean we we did have a similar group of friends there was definitely overlap there but yeah i was also so back then i thought that because we were we had so much momentum and we had so many people to work with that more people were serious about trying trying out the whole content creator life streamer life for themselves and i i wasn't personally interested i was more interested in being like the back end guy like manager or video editor type thing kind and like content director per se rather than an actual in front of the camera type thing because that's always been something for me i've always wanted to like create platforms for people to pursue their passions like express their creativity all that and streaming was a good way to do it because it was what everyone was doing at the time and i re i learned back then after like a couple of months of trying to make it happen that not everyone was actually dedicated to the grind or and even though i had these strategies in place no one really wanted to do them, and I was like, hmm. It was kind of like, well, just because Twitch was hype and it was trending at the time, that's kind of, people dabbled into it, but they didn't want to go, like, as full yeah. force as you, I guess you can say. I think it's because, like, when you think about people making a living playing video games, that that they're just, their gaming experience is the same as the casual gamer type thing, where you're just playing video games and making money as a result, and there's no difference between what they're doing versus what I'm doing other than the views that they're getting. But being on now that I'm on the other side, and even before I got here, I knew that there was a lot more work to it than that, because you can't just play whatever you want and then get the traction that you have, and you can't uh, just, and you can't just play with whoever you want and get the traction that you have either. Yeah. Um, and I understand that more so now that I'm yeah. like actually now that I actually have skin in the game, in the yeah. in the game of like content creation through gaming and stuff. And um, I love that. You know, and, it's so yeah. it's so funny if I may add, like, yeah, I I think. For those handful of videos I uploaded for Project Zomboid, I think one of the one part of the reason why I feel like I was successful in it, well, my success is very different. Like, <laughs> I would I would I would get really happy when one of my Lethal Company videos would just hit a hundred views, and mm -hmm. I was really I was in, even more happier when like the the Project Zomboid videos, even just like three of them hit a thousand views. That that made me really freaking happy, and I was like, oh wow, I wasn't expecting this. I. I think it's it's also because they're one of the reasons one of the reasons why I thought I, I was doing well is because I think there is a com, there are communities that are so passionate about this game that they want to see other people enjoy it for their entertainment and that's not a bad thing and mm -hmm. it was so cool because I felt like a lot of these people who were commenting on my videos were so like happy that another person like me was playing the game and I was enjoying it and I I wouldn't say that maybe because it was I don't know if Project Zomboid was trending at the time maybe maybe not um, I think I had a friend tell me that it was because that there were like VTubers were playing it maybe that's why it was trending mm -hmm. again but um, I genuinely like the zombies subgenre and that's why I enjoyed it but to go back onto what you were saying like sometimes like maybe maybe this isn't the thing that I'm the most passionate about. But I'm willing to mm -hmm. dip my toes into it and use that as, like, a vehicle or a vessel to show other people, like, yo, you can make income from something. And I was just using this game as an example. But what if, like, your niche was so-and-so? Um, mm -hmm. But trying to find the people who are willing to go, like, with you on that journey definitely was a challenge. Um, I think for me, we started with a lot of, like, League of Legends and uh, Valorant stuff. But then I started realizing I wasn't that passionate about Valorant. And that was the thing <laughs> yeah. that was trending hard because Valorant came out in the peak of quarantine. I will never forget that. Oh, my gosh. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I think the thing that I wanted to add off to what you were saying is, again, I think just getting started really, really matters regardless of what you are passionate with at the time. 
if you like something, just do it because one year later, six months later, I mean, that's something that definitely happened to me. Your interests change, you know? One, one minute I was super into like this game and now I'm really into this and now I'm making YouTube or now I'm making like food content, things change. But I think the most important thing is just starting because then you'll learn, then you'll make the mistakes mm-hmm. and you'll know how to do it better. And then the next thing, what's trending now is, uh, I don't know, like what's a popular game that came out recently? I know Elder, El- Elden Ring got another Elden Ring update, DLC, yeah. <laughs> but like the way that I see it is start, make all the mistakes, shake it off, get better find find the editing styles find what works and when that huge wave of whatever is trending now that you've made all the mistakes you know how to take it on strong and make stronger content and then it trends even harder or whatever mm-hmm. i i i love what you're saying i definitely wanted to say that i agreed and i i love it dude keep going so, so let's say that people have listened to this and they now they want to get started in content creation or pursuing their passion yeah. i have I imagine a pain point for people who want to get started is that they might not even know what they want to pursue in the first wow. place or which passion or hobby that they want to prioritize. So I kind of want to I kind of want to think about like or talk about some of the strategies on identifying what that hobby or passion could be and the yeah. way the way that I look at it or one one way to look at it is to look at how you spend your time away from work. I'm assuming that most people are working or in school in some point at some at yeah. some degree. Yeah. And you might be enjoying some a certain part of your life. And then at some point, you have to stop enjoying that part of your life because you have to go to bed for work or you have to go do your homework or you got to yeah. go to class. There's something that you were doing that you enjoyed that you had to put on hold because you were obligated to do something else. Right. And oh, I think. Wow. And I think like if you can identify what those things are and just start listing them down, then you might then that's how you can figure out what. Would potent- what you could potentially pursue from a yeah. content angle or just kind of share a bit more online. So my my thing was, uh, I mean, the reason why I started pursuing gaming is because, well, streamer stuff aside, it's not that I don't enjoy gaming. I'm not just here for money. I obviously enjoyed, I obviously enjoy enjoyed gaming enough to do it. And yeah. gaming has been a huge part of my life. And even my content creator journey in general, I've been making video game videos for like a decade at least. Yeah. And, um, what's it called? And... A, probably a, relate, a relatable pain point for gamers is like you'll be d- in your late night gaming session with your friends but you're the one that has to wake up at 6 in the morning because yeah. you have to go to work and it's 3am it's like dude do I just keep sending it and then be tired at work or do I try to make use of this next 3 hours trying to sleep or whatever and it's yeah. like okay well what if I didn't have to the way you think about it is what if I didn't have to go to that job and I could actually just continue playing the game it's like there are people making money playing video games so how do i get into that and there are so many answers out there on the internet now that there's no excuse really to uh, to not go out there and find ways to to make stuff happen obviously people are going to find different success at different rates it's going to depend on how well you learn stuff or how well you can like turn a gaming session into a piece of content that you can put out but you don't get better at doing that unless you're doing it it's like uh, the reason my turnaround time is so fast nowadays is because I already had, I, I gained some experience way back, like 10 years ago or so. Even if it was just for fun, like Windows Movie Maker type yeah. stuff. Like sitting in a video editor was very comfortable for me. And then when quarantine happened, uh, that was when like everyone was gaming. And I'm like, this is going to be the time where I learned video editing, at least for gaming. And there was a period of time where I just gamed for like five, six hours, edited for five, six hours, and did that and uploaded at the end of that. And I did that every day for at least 110 Yay. days straight. And that's just the streak. That's not including every video that I ever did in yeah. during quarantine. And that's all long form. I also did like at least hundreds of different uh, short form stuff for TikTok, Instagram. Did, did that whole did that whole thing. And then, yeah, yeah. So that way, when the opportunity to do Lethal Company came out, I was like, all right, I already have all the skills needed to make this happen. I just actually got to go do it. But it's not like I came out the out the woodworks just knowing how to do all this stuff. You know, it was skills that I built over time. So, yeah. Definitely um, but it's a, it's a lot easier now, nowadays, I think, because all the resources are just pe- people are openly sharing the resources now more so mm-hmm. than they were back then and without a paywall, too, you know, so. Um. See, it, I, I think that always comes down like so one of the guys at our office, you guys can't see it because I'm using it. But my webcam right now is the DJI pocket osmo blah 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 you can kind of see it here it's not working 
this is not working. Let me try <laughs> one more time. There it is. That I, that's that's the camera that I'm using. Like this is a vlogging camera. Um, one of the one of the guys uh, at the office I share, he is like, yeah, he's a realtor or something like that, and he bought that. And he bought this, which is like a handful of microphones. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him the exact same thing. Like, I know, I, I know so many people who bought the equipment and it was not cheap. And like a month later, they stopped or they never even started. And he was mm -hmm. just telling me, he's like, dude, I freaking agree with you. Like, I, I bought this city cam for my phone to do like videos of like me walking through houses and we never did it. And I think that's like, that's such a big testament um, to... I love meeting other creators that are doers, that take the initiative, that actually create, even if they don't have like like big numbers or whatever. I love meeting people like that because I know that they went through that mental struggle of like, I don't know how to start. People are gonna hate it. They're gonna think it's cringe. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be cringe, but they acknowledged all that and they did it anyways. That's why I love meeting other people like that because they went through the same like mental struggle and obstacles that I did because there was a point where for me, I was just like, fuck it, what do I got to lose? I don't think I'm mm -hmm. going to get, I, I don't think I'm going to be in a worse situation if I pursue content creation. And so I was just like, you know, I'm going to try it. And I yeah. love meeting people like that because I feel like in a sense we're very similar and I can relate to them. We can relate to each other because they had that same breaking point that was like, fuck it. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to try it. And I, I, I think... I, I had a feeling when I met you, Austin. It was so funny. Uh, we were at we were at uh, Nico's house, and I remember the first thing I saw I noticed was your shoes, and they were Gary V shoes. And I was like, "Oh, it was, <laughs> was the first time I've ever seen those in person." And then right. he said something. I was like, "Hey, what's up, man? I'm Brian." And you're like, "Oh, hey, yeah, I've heard of you." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, I, I met Nico." And he's like, "No, I've heard of you before, like working with like Nico and stuff." And I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. no, I'm just kidding. Come on, but I, I, I think. I think that's that's such a beautiful thing, man. Like, I I love hearing stories like that because it gets me fired up. And let me let me ask you this. Let's say, okay. from what you've learned in like the last handful of years, especially going through quarantine, learning how to edit and record and upload content. Like, if you met someone who wanted to pursue this, but is in that boat of like, I'm scared. People are gonna think I'm stupid. The content I'm gonna create is dumb. I know it's gonna take me years to get better at it. But they you but they tell you that they want to give it a shot, but they're just scared. What are some of the best pieces of advice you can give them? It's literally get started. And that's kind of like, uh, so that's something that I've been thinking about in recent times because they're at, at the ultimate goal, or at least right in my head right now, which I might have to change is to, yeah, that's okay. at, at least long term, my, my big thing is trying to get those people to take that first action. Cause I think like, like you said, that's not only the hardest part, for the person themselves to take upon for their journey but it's also the hardest sale that i have to, or like the if you want to call it a sale the hardest sale that i have to do as someone who wants to those kinds of people to actually hop on and what i've learned is that um that might from a business standpoint it might not even be the best idea to cater my stuff to those people just because there are so many people out there who are already taking the that first step and just need a bit of guidance on how to elevate yeah. their next ones and that i mean that that's all the advice i've heard from listening to all different business people about, across the board and that's why like going back to the process of vetting like who you want to work with and whatnot like client client wise it's the yeah. same thing in this in this space like who who am i going to be who's going to be who's going to be able to utilize what i'm offering more is it going to be the person who's a little wishy-washy and hasn't uploaded a piece of content yet but wants to or the person who's already done it, even if it's just like I've uploaded like 30, I've uploaded 30 videos. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I'm willing to do it in a different way yeah. if I knew how. Like one of those people is going to be able to like take things way farther than the other. And as much as I love to help the people who aren't taking action on their own, it's like there's not much I can do if I've already put out everything. If I've already put out stuff out there. I'm already showing them a working model and saying that the first step you need to do is take action and they're yeah. not doing that, you know, yeah. like that's the honest answer. I'm not going to say like, oh, I, I'm going to do everything I can to like cater to this one person and make sure that they act because that's not my responsibility. My, re yeah. my responsibility is to show them and it's not even my responsibility. It's just something that I like oh. to do. I, I want to put all the tools out there that I'm using and be a like a working model for the 
for what people want to do and then for them and so that way when they do act it's there for them yeah but i but i think taking responsibility for getting them to act is a lot more energy than i'm willing to invest and i've learned that like all like over the past 10 years or even the past five and especially when i was working with my streamer friends who ended up wanting being being more hobbyist than professionals which is fine yeah that's fine and that's something i'm trying to wrap my head around too it's like not everyone's gonna go for like hyper successful goals pursuing their hobbies or whatever um i don't see why not but (laughs) i love that dude i i sorry i I cut you off but i i have seen that so many times in in people and not even like in streaming but just in life in general like i can bring you the tools i can show you the tools i can show you how to do it but at the end of the day, you have to execute on it. It's the, mm-hmm. you can take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And I know yeah. so many, some of my closest friends, I like sometimes when I have conversations and they're ranting to me about how stressful their life is, like I want to pull my hair out because like, like, bro, this is how I did it. This is how other people have did it. If you don't want to like mm-hmm. use me as like, even if, if you don't want to take my word for it. And all you have to do is this, this, and this. And they hit me with a but, but I can't, but, but this but that but you're a people person and i'm not and i'm just like you can say whatever excuse that you want but like i i i hope that when you say you want these things that somewhere you actually mean it (laughs) yeah you actually mean it and you're not or or are you just saying it because you want attention Mm -hmm. um because like there's going to be a point like life's stressful enough as it is like i don't want to hear it because then it's gonna like mentally like ruin my mm-hmm. day or whatever but exactly I, I love hearing the success stories i love hearing your success stories because it helps me believe that it's possible for me and if it's possible for you and it's possible for me that's sure as hell and like 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 i'm gonna be honest with you like 12 years ago when i picked up this thing i think like 90 percent, 99 percent of my whole career was based off of mistakes and messing up and messing like losing like just mm-hmm. making so many freaking mistakes but i think it's i i think for me going through the process like i needed all of that i needed all those fuck ups i needed all those mistakes i needed all those obstacles because if i didn't have them i wouldn't have gotten better and Mm -hmm. i think about that all the time and i love it and i feel like that that is just the same when when you when you're saying that like you're you're passionate about showing the people showing people how you can make an avenue out of this but not everyone's going to execute. And uh, there's a saying that I heard that I resonate with all the time, and it's like motivation and education is nothing without execution. And that's something mm-hmm. I think about a lot. And I mm. I love what you said. I feel like that relates so much to it. Oof, tell him, tell him, Austin. <laughs> Just do it, man. Just, <laughs> Just do something. Have a Nike attitude. Yeah, man. stop complaining and actually <laughs> do something. I'm, I'm not, I'm I mean, like, I've, I've thought about in the past like how i'm not the best at listening to people's like personal problems like that um and that's something that i would like to work on in the future but at, sure. then i started realizing like wait a minute these people the reason i'm not good at it is because these pro these people's problems suck and they're solvable it's not like you know most of them most of them there there are some no, where fair. it's like that are that can like ruin someone's lives but most of the stuff that's complained about on a date on a daily basis is like well if you actually just put some work towards your actual passions and your actual goals yeah then then you can complain to me about different things. Like when Brian comes to complain to me about something, if there is a complaint, it's like, hmm, I, I, I don't think my thumbnail went as well with this I with this that. audience or kind of something. I, I, I don't even know if that was a real thing. I'm just kind of making one up right now. Or it's no. like, I, no, there I don't, is I don't to that. I remember that. Yeah. Or I don't like how I framed myself in this video. Like that's a different, yeah. that, that's a problem that that's, that's the next level up. He's not saying like, oh, I, I'm not getting enough views I on can. YouTube. I don't know if I can like, if I'm going to make it or whatever. It's like, let let's just get down to business let's get down to strategies tactics yeah. and uh figure it out and see what the next iteration does for us like absolutely see what the next change see how a change happens and that's kind of that's kind of fun too like um uh, even if we mess up i actually i actually look forward to like failure sometimes because i yeah. know that in the long term that it that i'll find a way to make it work and every time we fail that's just adding a new plot line to our story that we can talk about like it, it makes the story even more compelling like our success story even more compelling right and at, at the end i mean we're not at the end yet still working on our way there but uh you know <laughs> i get kind of just stacking up new chapters and everything but i get you so we are very close to hitting our 60 minute mark and i For sure at least i hope we are because I, I know i started recording while we were still kind of setting up but whatever mm-hmm. there's no rules to this fuck it uh, there are three things i want to ask you okay okay so and please don't 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 feel like you have to rush like 
take all the time. The okay. first question I want to ask you is, in your definition, what is a professional? I.e., a professional dance dance revolution player, a professional painter, a professional artist, a professional streamer. What is your definition of the word professional? Or mm. if you have multiple definitions, um, that works out too. Okay. What is a professional? I would say, I would say someone who does their craft for a living, honestly, and with a portfolio to back to back up their um, their position nice. as well. Because uh, I could say that I'm a, a professional YouTuber. I mean, I it's literally my job now or my career path, and I have I have the numbers, the analytics, and the upload history to show that. Yeah. And whereas if if I, if I said that, like six months ago where I had where I, I mean I still had like 300 videos or whatever but I wasn't making any money off of it I was still working as a sushi chef instead it's like okay well you're not that's still kind of hobbyist because you're not getting paid to do it kind of thing yeah, <laughs> or yeah. like you could you could have you could have the professional skills I think like you can you can be professional like you can have the skills for that but I think for a professional you need to be able to do it for other people or at least and do it do it for yourself in a way where you can support yourself through that practice you know i love Um, that dude i that's something i always think about i've gotten different answers from people um you know in slang terms people will be like oh that's so pro like you're pro meaning like oh you're just good at something and Mm -hmm. um, another one i got from someone was oh if you get paid from it you know you're professional at it and i don't Mm -hmm. think there's a right or wrong answer but i I want to hear how other people uh see it um, yeah. So like, I might not. Question. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, you might not. And so, like, I might not be a professional video editor per se. Like, if you look at my videos, it's just kind of basic stuff. Obviously, not a professional graphic designer, like based on my thumbnails or. But I mean, hey, I'm making a living doing this. So it, yeah. It's the, it's all under the one umbrella of being a YouTuber, I suppose. Yeah. And a self-operating a one too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and my second question is: This okay. is going to be out of out of left field. Do you believe in the paranormal or the supernatural? Okay, and so uh, you, oh, <laughs> go ahead. No, no, just go, just go. No, I, it's because I remember I remember hearing this question during your original podcast because I remember yeah. listening to all of your podcasts in preparation for our, for the one that we would do, and that was a part of you that I wasn't even even aware of that that you were into. You know, I was like, yeah. oh wow, that's kind of a cool like little personality tidbit that yeah. I wasn't aware of. Um, I can't say that. I've had like any personal experiences with the paranormal, but I think it's weird to rule it out. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, if we want to go like the Gin Rummy, the third route with bo- the Boondocks, like there are known knowns and there are known <laughs> unknowns, but there are also unknown unknowns. Feels weird to rule it out when there are yeah. so many people who say that they've had their experiences and all that. And even um, even in my own personal history, I guess my my parents have told me like childhood stories of my brother and I like interacting with people who weren't there. Yo, I just got chills. So. Yo. <laughs> um but yeah, I don't I don't put too much stock into like pursuing those lines of thinking. Just yeah. but um I mean I'm not gonna rule it out, you know. No, feels, that's fair. That's yeah. super fair. I and so oh no, keep going. Keep going. I'm gonna transition rather. Please finish your thought. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I get so um, excited when I converse with you, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> um I was gonna say it was, it was gonna be a little silly. Like the most paranormal that I've got in was playing Phasmophobia when it first came out. Just kind of no life to it. <laughs> so. it. Counts. It counts. No, just I. Yeah. So I I love talking about spooky stuff, and mm-hmm. I I think I was talking to like a friend or a cousin of mine recently, and I admitted to them why I like spooky stuff. And this is a really like sus story. Um, okay. So. I'm Filipino, us is Filipino, and whenever you're younger and your your parents drag you to like, hey, we're going into your aunt or uncle's house or your third cousin's, fifth cousin's uncle, like you get dragged to a Filipino party probably every month, every other month during your childhood. Mm -hmm. And I hated going to them because there was no one I knew. I was a shy kid. I was an introverted kid. And they're always like, all right, go eat and go play with the play with the other kids. I'm like, I don't fucking know these kids. Why would I play with them? And Going to so many of these family parties as a kid, I was just like, I, I hate this. I don't want to be here. I hate this. And then eventually when p- computers became a thing, um, I remember at one Filipino party, I just hopped on the computer and I was on YouTube 
looking at scary fucking videos. I don't know why, but I would just <laughs> watch them. And I would have the other kids watch with me too. And it made things exciting and it made things bearable for me. So it was bearable for me to go to these parties because I would just, I wouldn't be bored essentially. And so mm-hmm. I think that translates to, to my adult life today. Holy shit. Who needs like, <laughs> Who needs uh, therapy when you can just have a podcast? But I think exactly. that translates <laughs> that translates to this today why I like spooky stuff because I feel like it's a good storytelling thing. Like I like exactly. looking at like and and to answer the question too, I want to believe in spooky stuff. I I think in theoretically I do believe in like the paranormal and the supernatural, but I've never seen definitive proof. And I mm-hmm. do want to see definitive proof at some point in my life, but I feel like I might regret it. But um Anyways, like, I think that's one of the reasons, I think that's the main reason why I like spooky shit is because, yeah. like, it's exciting, it gets, it gets something that I, almost everyone can relate to, and I was going to ask, even if you don't believe in it, or if you do believe in it, have you heard an interesting story where someone has experienced something they could not rationally explain how it happened, or has something happened to you where you couldn't rationally explain how it happened? And if mm. you don't have one, that's okay, too. Yeah. Not off top. I might have to get back to you on that one. But I will say some, something that came up was um, one thing One thing I don't, I would like changed about views on the supernatural is its one dimensional nature of it being like hostile and negative or whatever. Like, I think I think it's a lot more interesting to like explore the positive aspects. Like, why would why why are we assuming that every ghost is out to like haunt us or kill us or something? Yeah, like I I think I love that. I think it's a lot more likely that there are. Like if if there the supernatural beings exist, then yeah. that th- they're going to be across the spectrum of morality or action, just like anything else is basically. And, uh, wow, yeah, that was a good it's, freaking answer. So like, I, I, if anything, I just get bored because people are like, oh, dude, you're getting haunted, you're possessed. I'm like, yeah, okay, and what? <laughs> like, there's got to be. I'll, I'll lean, I'm going to lean. I'm going to lean into it. What what about the, when I go into flow state? It, and that's like a, yeah. a, is that like a good possession or something like? Let's look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking Austin. Okay, so and we're coming to a close. And the third question I wanted to ask you is, what do you have cooking up soon? What can we expect from you? And mm-hmm. please plug all of your socials. Okay, so like I said, like I said towards the beginning, middle of our podcast, my name's Chef Austin, spelled S H E F F for search engine op- optimization purposes. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a story behind That's... that too, and I'll be writing about that soon writing a book that doesn't matter yet but my current my current goal right now is i'm i'm starting a streaming a streaming project over on twitch because i've already built a youtube following i showed that it's possible to get to youtube partner through gaming and to support to make a living doing that and i realized that it might not be a relatable journey because all my friends are streamers they're twitch streamers like why would they want to do youtube so now the goal is let me hit twitch partner by twitchcon 2025 so that way I can be like, okay, well, it works when you're a streamer too. So, you know, wow, let's, let's, go. let's go out there. So, yeah, I'll be, now that I'm like out of a day job, I'll be streaming a lot more on Twitch. Obviously, keeping the YouTube stuff going on. You can find me, Chef Austin, S-H-E-F-F, Austin, on both I of those. Love it. Austin, thank and, you so much. Oh, keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, that was, that was about it. I was just going to brag numbers, but I don't have to do that on here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Austin, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. You know, you gotta you gotta come back for the next one. We're gonna do more of these. This isn't the end of it. Oh, for sure. We're gonna see Austin again, guys. I appreciate <laughs> it, dude. And everyone who watching and listening, enjoy. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs> Shout out Drake Cat. <laughs> I'm gonna plug him real quick. It's my dog. <laughs>